Hi, this is Dr. Kathy Dooley. I wanted to introduce you guys to the innervation of the Terrigal Palatine Fossa as well as Hard and Soft Palate Oral Cavity uh, coming in from the PT Fossa and also connections over to the lacrimal gland. As I zoom in here, I wanted to show you that I've made a key. I apologize to those who may be colorblind, so I did the best I could to pick some neutral-ish colors, at least uh, different shades, so you could discern the difference. Uh, the dotted line that you see that uh, is afferent because the arrow is pointing to the left is for presynaptic somatosensory, which is general sensory afferent. This is your light touch, two-point discrimination, that type of stuff, as well as pain and temperature. Um, your um, first order neuron is located here, um, and we also have a solid line for postsynaptic somatosensory, again, general sensory afferent, and that's your second order neuron. This is where we synapse in the CNS. Remember that all sensation always synapses where? In the CNS and never on a ganglion. The purple that you see, uh, the next line is, that's dotted and also afferent, uh, going back to the left here, is a presynaptic special sense of taste, which is called special visceral afferent uh, because it evokes a visceral response. And this is our first order neuron. And then the solid line is our postsynaptic special sense of taste, uh, special visceral afferent, which is our second order. And again, uh, we have our synapse, of course, on a nucleus because all sensation synapses where? In a nucleus. Uh, opposite of that would be our autonomics. And now we can see that the arrows are pointing to the right. <clears throat> the green dotted line is for presynaptic parasympathetic. These are also called preganglionic parasympathetic because they set ups on not a nucleus, but a ganglion. They are the only things, autonomics, the only things that synapse on ganglia. The solid green line that you see is for postsynaptic parasympathetics. These are from the ganglion and out through usually branches of trigeminal nerve for the head and neck. Uh, the dotted uh, red line here is presynaptic sympathetic and uh, this is mostly going to be uh, from the spinal cord itself uh, coming out into uh, the periphery. And then our postsynaptic sympathetic uh, for this pathway will be a solid line emanating from a ganglion, of course, because it is autonomic. Again, sensation, the top ones, never synapsing on a ganglion. It's where their nerve cell body is located for the first order neuron, but not where a synapse exists. And right here for autonomics, they always synapse on the ganglion. Okay, so we'll start and pick a pathway as we know these pathways are expanse. I've also numbered the foramina and put them over to the side here. And I'll put a screenshot of this picture so that you can actually study the picture if you like. I think it might prove to be really helpful. Well, let's pick an afferent pathway. Let's pick one. Let's pick a sensory pathway from the hard palate that's general sensory afferent. So at home, if you're just deciding to do a little practice, what you can do is run your tongue across your hard palate and if you could feel that, if you could feel pain or sensation, any kind of pain, any kind of sensation, what you would do is feel, have sensory receptors located on this hard palate, and that's supplied by this greater palatine nerve, and let's trace this dotted pathway up. We're tracing the dotted pathway up. We go through the PT ganglion without synapsing to hit the maxillary nerve. We go on the maxillary nerve when we're traveling afferently over to Meckel's cave. We find the trigeminal nerve and we find the trigeminal ganglion. The trigeminal ganglion is not a synapse. Notice it's a dotted line. We're determining if it's worthy via a central process to even go in. So here we are coming through Meckel's cave. Here we go, Meckel's cave right here. And now we come in to the CNS into the trigeminal sensory nucleus where we now see a solid line because we have synapsed. This is our second order neuron. If the sensation is deemed worthy, we will take it up to the thalamus where we'll hit a third uh, order neuron and a second synapse. And if that's deemed worthy to get past the bouncer of this amazing cerebral club called thalamus, then we will take it up to the postcentral gyrus. Now let's come back to that same hard palate and we actually do have autonomics from that hard palate. But notice we have no taste. We do have, however, taste on the soft palate. Weirdly enough, try this at home. Take a sucker and just put it into your mouth. Don't go too far back or you'll gag, but go to the junction of the hard and soft palate and you'll actually taste sweet. Amazing that you would do that. Uh, the soft palate has taste sensation. So the receptors are here on the soft palate. We'll go up 
through the lesser palatine foramina onto the lesser palatine nerve, which also takes general sensory afferents from the soft palate. Note there's another purple pathway. This purple pathway is for taste. We now go through the PT ganglion without synapsing to go onto a nerve called the vidian nerve. We go onto the vidian nerve and then we separate from the vidian nerve afferently going back to the CNS towards the nerve called the greater petrosal nerve, a branch of cranial nerve seven. We're on the greater petrosal nerve, we have to get back to cranial nerve seven where we have what's called a geniculate ganglion. Note the geniculate ganglion is dotted. It is not solid because there is no synapse. We travel back on seven, we exit seven to enter our nucleus at the caudal pons called the solitary nucleus where we finally get to synapse. Remember all sensation synapses on a nucleus, not on a ganglion. Now, let's come back to this hard and soft palate, and now we see that there's autonomics. Look at that, there's autonomics, but those are solid lines. From where do they come? Well, all of this nasal cavity, all of the hard palate, soft palate mucosa, and then also this lacrimal gland over to the side get their autonomics from two places. Let's do parasympathetics first. That's the green dotted line. At caudal pons, there is a superior salivatory nucleus. All sympathetics and parasympathetics start on a nucleus. So we have a superior salivatory nucleus. The dotted line, we see it traveling on cranial nerve seven. So these hitchhiking preganglionic parasympathetics, the axon from its nucleus travels on seven. And then seven has a nerve called the greater petrosal nerve. This looks familiar because it carried the taste back. Now, greater petrosal joins with deep petrosal to form a vidian nerve. The preganglionic parasympathetics are traveling on vidian nerve. Vidian nerve will then synapse, going through the pterygoid canal onto the PTP ganglion, the pterygopalatine ganglion that's in the pterygopalatine fossa. We synapse here, and then trigeminals V2 branches carry postganglionic parasympathetics to their site. Lesser palatine takes it to the soft palate. Greater palatine takes it to the hard palate, and then also to the inferior concha. We have V2's branches called the posterior superior lateral nasal going to the superior and inferior concha. We have the nasal palatine branch of V2 traveling to the nasal septum and then intermingling with greater palatine at the incisive foramen to the, in the area of the incisors. We can also hop back on V2 where V2 will become infraorbital nerve in the roof of the maxillary sinus and then give off a branch called the zygomatic nerve that gives off a branch called the zygomatical temporal nerve. And then the weirdest thing happens, this parasympathetic pathway jumps via communicating branches off of V2 and onto the lacrimal nerve, which is a branch of V1, ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve. And since the lacrimal nerve will then take it over to the lacrimal gland. You guys have probably experienced plucking your eyebrows and that sensation kind of hurts and it may even make you tear up because the lacrimal nerve takes sensation from that brow area where the lacrimal nerve or lacrimal gland exists. So <clears throat> we're carrying general sensory afferent from that area, but then also taking postganglionic parasympathetic to the lacrimal gland. Now, what about sympathetics? I and mean, we have to slow down this mucus production, yes? If we're gonna slow down mucus production, we wanna stop that parasympathetic activity. We use sympathetics to stop, which is why it's more redder color. We start for all preganglionic sympathetics in the head at the lateral horn, those intromedial lateral horn cells of T1 to T3 spinal cord. This is our nucleus. All sympathetics and parasympathetics have to start at a nucleus, nerve cell bodies in the CNS. Our axon then travels on a weird pathway to the ventral rootlets, to the ventral root, to the spinal nerve, to the ventral ramus, where they connect to the sympathetic chain via white rami communicans. The sympathetic chain then leads us to the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion, where we go post-ganglionic because there's a synapse here. Here's our synapse. Remember, all autonomic synapse on a ganglion. Sensation and somatomotor never do only autonomics. Superior cervical sympathetic ganglion then travels on the internal carotid plexus, which travels on the deep petrosal nerve, and deep petrosal then joins with greater petrosal to form the vidian nerve. Remember, these are postsynaptic. They've already synapsed. So they'll go through the PT ganglion without synapsing and travel on the branches of V2. They'll go to the lesser palatine nerve to shut down parasympathetic drive to the lacrimal, I'm sorry, the <clears throat> mucosa on the soft palate. 
You will also have postganglionic sympathetics to the mucosa on the hard palate via the greater palatine nerve. We also want to shut down nasal congestion, so we'll take the posterior superior lateral nasal and posterior inferior lateral nasal to shut down the mucosa production at the uh, conche and their respective meatuses. And then we also have the nasal palatine nerve covering the nasal septum. It has nasal mucosa, so we have to shut down the mucus production there as well as those intermingling fibers with the greater palatine nerve at the incisive foramen at the anterior edge of the hard palate. We also have postganglionic sympathetics jumping onto maxillary, going over to the infraorbital nerve, which gives off the zygomatic nerve, which gives off zygomatical temporal nerve, and then there's communicating branches. We jump onto the lacrimal nerve to get over to stop crying. <laughs> it's to stop our lacrimation at the lacrimal gland. So that describes the four different pathways of the pterygoid palatine fossa with pre and post ganglionic parasympathetic sympathetic. We could also call those presynaptic, uh, parasympathetic and sympathetic. And we also explained the presynaptic, not preganglionic, but prenucleic, presynaptic uh, general sensory afferent as well as somato, uh, sorry, special visceral afferent. These important pathways are all listed here. We also listed out the respective foramina since you're often asked which foramen these respective structures go to. So for number one, this is V2 going through foramen rotundum. For number two, greater palatine foramens for the greater palatine nerve. Number three, lesser palatine foramina for <clears throat> the lesser palatine nerves. A pterygoid canal for vidian nerve, also called the nerve to pterygoid canal, spinal palatine foramen for things like spinal palatine artery, nasal palatine nerve, and posterior superior lateral nasal nerve. We also have the greater palatine canal, which gives uh, us the greater palatine nerve, lesser palatine nerve, and posterior inferior lateral nasal nerve. Carotid canal for the internal carotid plexus, internal acoustic meatus for cranial nerve 7, and the palatal vaginal canal for the pharyngeal nerve going back to nasal pharynx from V2. So this entire pathway is explained here. I'll include a screenshot in the notes below, and I hope you guys find this useful. Highly, highly suggest making things color differentiated so you can remember it easier. Just remember your occipital temporal gyri are adjacent to your limbic system. So colors, shapes, uh, all the dotted lines or solid lines, you'll remember it better and you'll definitely remember it better in your own handwriting. So don't just use these pictures in this video. Write it out for yourself. This is Dr. Kathy Dooley and I hope you find this useful. Thanks.